This is my room. My eyes are on the speaker. Tell me why. Because that looks fantastic. French grammar is hardly the most exciting subject with which to win the hearts and minds of Year 8 students. Bon weekend! Oui. Oui. But today, John Bailey is visiting award-winning AST languages teacher, Helene Tulajewski, at Twynham School in Christchurch, who brings her subject alive with an imaginative and innovative approach. Lisez le texte et décidez, c'est un niveau. Niveau 4, niveau 5, niveau 6. Pourquoi? Justifie, justifie ton choix. Vous avez euh, deux minutes avec ton partenaire. Parle, parle, parle. In this lesson, the children are practicing their skills in the three main tenses. OK. C'est niveau quoi? Niveau 4, 5 ou 6? Niveau... OK, niveau 4, c'est fantastique. Exemple. Oui, Je m'appelle. Je m'appelle. Exemple. Superbe. Je m'appelle. D'autres éléments. Qu'est-ce qu'il y a encore? Il y a des... Connecteurs. Il y a des connecteurs. Bien, il y a des connecteurs. Exemple. Oui Aussi. Aussi, bravo. Encore deux éléments de niveau 4. Oui. Like who they're with. They don't really... Superbe. I've watched you teach two lessons now and I haven't seen a textbook anywhere. So these materials, do you make them? Do you... I make them. I don't use a textbook. I will look at the textbook. I will follow the curriculum, the, our scheme of work based on the textbooks. I will make sure that I get the ideas, but then I develop my own activities to suit my students, to suit their needs, the way they learn, uh, make sure it's interactive. French is meant to be spoken, not textbook work. Do you want to give an example of the activity and the form negative? Here, the activity. I don't play au cartes. I don't play the au... cartes. Cartes. Cartes, yes. Thank you very much. And Alors. in the textbook, what I can't find sometimes is complex opinions in your eight. It's far too basic. I can see some c'est nul or c'est barbant. So I write my own text to make sure that I get these complex opinions in, okay. which is more interesting than a PowerPoint presentation because students are just mere spectators of a PowerPoint presentation. It's not interactive. So really there's two teachers in the room at least because there's you and the materials that you prepared. Yes. Alors, regardez les objectifs pour aujourd'hui. Les vacances de Madame T pour réviser le futur. On va utiliser les informations pour écrire un texte au niveau 6. Regardez les objectifs. Comment dit-on les objectifs Parle, parle, parle. Vous avez... Allez, 10 secondes. Please just say, revise the future tense. The information will write it. Write it. The information will write it. Write it. Write it. For level 6. Why is it a good idea for them to be discussing the objectives and then telling you what the objectives I mean, are? It's a, I, mean, I display the objectives in French. I think it's a very good... So they listen to a pronunciation when I read the objectives and also they talk about the objectives together and so it's a nice little reading translate, translation exercise. So, and they, they talk about the, the objectives so they know themselves what they're doing. How can I make this a level six then? How can I... Uh, Write a text at level six. Add yes, Jenny. past and future. Yes, we need to include the past tense and the future tense. C'est cool? Oui? OK. Qu'est-ce que c'est le passé? Étape 1, étape 2. Avec ton partenaire, parle, parle, parle de la formation du passé. Vous avez euh, deux minutes. Avec ton partenaire, parle, parle, parle. There is... Booster LL. I noticed that... One of the things about doing a lot of paired exercises and having a lot of cues up on the whiteboard is it seems to give you a lot of time to go around working with individual students and with pairs of students. I know that somebody is going to be paired up with somebody more slightly uh, who understands French more, so they can, yes, they work nicely together. So I go around and uh, I see if they, they're on track or they, they've got any problems, so I can, uh, I can help them. If it's in the first list, if it's in the first list, what would you use? Être or avoir for step one? 
Um, no, Ed. Ed. Yeah. So if it's Ed, it's il, elle, on. No, e. Très bien. Est. That pairing and your individual explanation, are, are they your main tools for differentiation? Differentiation is by outcome. It's by, we are much better going to say, some will be able to stick to the task and some will be able to really fly with it and just give me lots of complex opinions, lots of uh, uh, different verbs within a sentence and connectives. Elle fait? She went. She went. No, she went. No, elle fait? There's only one step. I can hear only. Elle a. When I plan a task, I make sure that, well, those who find, find it really hard, they have the support on the board. They know they have the support in their books. And those who find this really easy, don't you look at the board, don't look at the support in front of you, talk to your partner using what you have, the French that you have in your head, and make sure you make it complex. Et trois, deux, un, merci. Okay, numéro un. How many steps of the past tense? Right. No. Two steps. What do I need to check for the past tense? Which list it's in. Which list it's in. Now, if it is in the first list, what do I need to use for step one? What do I need to use? Brit. If it's je, then je suis. Superb. Je suis. Il, elle, on. Et. Superb. Nous. Sommes. Excellent. Il, elle. Um, sommes. Excellent. Superb. Bravo. And if it's not in the first list, what do I need to use for my step one? When you're talking about finding the past tense of a verb and the routine you go through, I'm very attracted to the idea that you're breaking stuff down in a way that's comprehensible to them. Are you able to describe your thinking process when you develop a list like this? The past tense is quite tricky to teach, so I thought I've got to think of uh, one, way of, one way of teaching the past tense, break everything down so it's easier for the students to make sense of. So I put verbs, all the verbs taking et on one list all the irregular verbs in a second list, and in the third list is the verbs that are all the regular verbs. So each time they have a verb in front of the infinitive, they should be able to locate it in either list one, list two, or neither list. Yes. They should be able to apply step one and then step two. Therefore, they should be able to do the past tense. To go, allez, put it in the past tense. A L L E O. Shock, shock, horror. Past tense. It's a struggle, isn't it, to learn another language because you get the method in front of your eyes, but there's all sorts of cognitive interference that stops you from learning. So how, how, do, how, do, how do we drill it into children? How do we... You drill it with different activities. Écoutez la musique. Passe, Rosie. Passe, Rosie. La musique. Stop. Rosie, uh, le groupe avec Rosie, sélectionne un numéro et traduit, traduit la phrase. C'est cool yeah. Ouais. Alors attention, on commence. Voilà, monsieur. Ok, sélectionne un numéro. Ah, sélectionne un numéro. Un, deux, trois, quatre, cinq, six. She stayed in a hotel with a restaurant. If you repeat it a lot during your lesson and different activities, when they go home and they need to write something in the past tense, hopefully they will remember, oh yes, is it in the first list, is it in the second list? She stayed. If you do it very quickly, they'll understand, maybe, yes, they'll understand, but then when you move on in the lesson, they won't remember. So it's just a question of repeating in class and with different activities and make sure that the activities are creative as well. Le groupe de Jack, volontaire, vas-y. Elle, elle est restée dans un hôtel avec le restaurant. Ah ah, problème, petit problème, vas-y. Euh, oui. Elle est restée dans un hôtel avec un restaurant. Avec un restaurant, attention, avec le restaurant. With the restaurant, le restaurant, non, avec un restaurant. Bravo. They're working without realizing it. Okay. There's an element of competition as well, and they like it. And it allows you to introduce a number of uh, repetitions into the lesson. Yes. After the game with Rosie, the children practice their future tense with a game of battleships. Uh, Vas-y, tu voulais faire, Ben? Uh, Pas. Ouais. 
Écoute de la musique. Bravo, il va écouter de la musique. Je suis désolée. Ici, Sam. Euh, elle ne va pas aller en Italie. Bravo, elle ne va pas aller en Italie. Superbe, et tu as un bonbon également. I think there've already been six episodes in this lesson. You keep up a pretty brisk pace, don't you? Keep them occupied, so we won't, ha we won't have time to get bored. And if they don't get bored, they enjoy the lesson, they learn a lot. You don't give them a chance to, to misbehave or just to keep off task because there's always something for them to do, always something for them to discuss, always something for them to think of. So there, yes, for an hour, in an hour, they've done a lot. Uh, S'il te plaît, Katie. Elle, a, elle va faire du camping. Elle va faire ou elle va faire? Elle va faire. Excellent. Elle va faire du camping. Non, je suis désolée. Bien. Elle It's the same va... kind of construction oh, yeah. method of learning language yeah. that you've done before, and it keeps popping up in different guises. Yes. Okay. And, and the game? Did you make this game? I make this game. Yes. Merci. Wow. In the next lesson with Year Tens, John can see that Helene's rigor and structure, and the fun and enjoyment are all evident as the children practice their skills for their oral exam. Une question au présent avec une question au passé ou au futur. Alors écrivez deux questions, OK, de ton choix. Vous avez allez une minute, écrivez deux questions. So they're consolidating their learning, they're having to write the questions and use yeah. you know, use their tenses correctly and so on. Correct. They've got all their support, they've got everything in front of them and everything will be removed at the end of a lesson. And I might have figured out my question, but yours might yeah. involve a whole number of problems I haven't yet solved. Yes. Vous allez vous lever avec votre carte. Relax. Parle, parle, parle. Et faites des dialogues. Est-ce que tu as allé à la cour? À la cour. J'ai mangé à la cantine avec mes copains. Euh, aussi, j'ai regardé une vidéo. And what I notice is, as this runs, they slowly relax and become more confident. And I guess that, and being prepared to take risks. If they master that, they will get an excellent grade in their speaking exam. I want them to relax and be able to enjoy the language. I think at one point, um, at the other end of the classroom, letting, letting everybody speak. <laughs> Collège avec mes amis à 8h30. Je pense que c'est très amusant. Could see they were answering each other's questions and uh, giving elaborate answers. So I thought they're doing the work. Um, I was not. I was there doing nothing. I just. I was admiring them. I was very pleased with what they were doing. Attention! Ne regardez pas. Ne regardez pas le support. Utilisez la tête, la mémoire. Cinq minutes et stop. Concentration. Dan, cinq minutes. What's the secret of being a successful language teacher? Uh, well, loving your subject, loving your students, uh, being proud of her achievement, uh, challenging them as well. You must do the homework. S'il te plaît, ta ta ta, Marcus. Il faut bien les le devoirs. Excellent. Alors encore. Uh, il faut faire uh, le devoir. Excellent. Attention. Faire. Okay. Faire. Il faut faire les devoirs. You have to think of ways, manageable steps, on how they can get there. And when they get there, it's the best feeling in the world.